when we see in the media a lot of the disruptions, right, tend to be actions coordinated by public sector organizations, such as law enforcement. Um, and the recent one, a couple of months ago, is Emotet, of course, which is coordinated by the US Department of Justice together with law enforcement agencies in Europe and Canada and also other countries. And so this um, trick bot disruption is probably one of the rare cases where the actions are coordinated by private sector organizations. So it raised a lot of, uh, generated a lot of interest. So man, there are many questions, of course. And so one of the questions that many of us are curious about is, you know, the business case behind the, the action of the trick bot disruption. So, for example, why the focus on trick bot? Because there's other malware that's equally prevalent, equally prolific. So what makes TrickBot so dangerous? So um, that's a great question. Trick, first of all, this action, this malware botnet disruption action was the 23rd action that was taken by the Digital Crimes Unit worldwide team, including a big group of people in Redmond, Washington, our corporate headquarters. So we've been working on these types of cases for a while, but you're right, TrickBot did get a lot of attention in the press. And the reason that we decided to focus on TrickBot was that starting in 2016, we saw that TrickBot was a banking trojan and it was designed to steal banking credentials. And we were starting to see the level of infection that appeared to be spreading across the world. So we were tracking a number of different botnets, but this one seemed to be growing and it built itself into a massive botnet and the malware itself was evolving. So our team in Redmond was analyzing the malware to see what it was doing and what the intentions were. And it became what's called malware as a service. Uh, we're also, we have a team focused on ransomware, exclusively focused on that threat. And that team is putting together recommendations. They published a report recently um, as a part of a broader initiative to recommend to the U.S. government initially, and I'm sure will be to other governments as well, about how they can put in place measures and teams to start addressing the threat of ransomware. So um, another area my team's very active on is what we call technical support fraud, which are those fake websites or pop-ups that make people believe there's something wrong with their computer and as a result that they need services that they do not need and they represent themselves in the name of Microsoft. So we've taken many actions, built cases, filed civil cases ourselves and referred criminal cases to authorities um, in various countries. So that's another area that we're focused on that's a little outside of the malware kind of crime, but still a crime impacting our customers. Sounds like your team had been keeping busy during all this time. So thank you very much, uh, Mary Jo, for your time today to talk to us about some of the um, behind the scenes actions and decisions in disrupting one of the world's top most wanted malware. And I think for many of us, while we may catch the, the headlines, right, relating to such actions, there are always valuable lessons we can take away by learning some of the decisions driving such actions. So thank you very much again for your time today. Thanks for having me.